Hello and welcome to the second part of our AGD tutorial looking at importing and exporting blocks. And today, as you can see, I have got a screen from Saberwolf. Some of you may have seen uh, on the Facebook site that I've uh, found a way to convert entire screens, but for the time being, I'm just going to look at uh, taking this little flower here and showing you how to uh, extract the data from a small part of the screen like this convert it into a binary file and then look at importing it into AGD. So the first thing I want to do then to get started is to uh, take a look at the uh, screen without the attributes and here I can see the pixel layout. If I zoom in and uh, drop down here so we can see here there's the flower and uh, there you can see a second copy of it there. I'm just going to look at taking this flower here for the uh, for the purposes of the demo today. They're just checking the colors again. The problem here, of course, as you will no doubt have noticed, is that uh, this thing is actually inverted. The uh, pixels, the white pixels are where the black ones should be and so on. So I'm going to first of all invert the pixels. And of course that makes it look a little bit strange. So I also need to invert the colors. So let's check it now and it looks fine. So obviously importing into AGD it's better to have it um, with the pixels defining the shape and the background being uh, no pixels as you can see. So now what I need to do is I just line up this uh, selector and highlight those pixels that I want that area. So this whole area here I'm going to basically save it off. It's three columns by uh, seven rows there. So that's 21 blocks in total. Okay, so just as I've shown you in the previous video, all I need to do once that's highlighted is to uh, just go into the menu here, choose export, export selection. So this is gonna export only that part of the image. And then I'll choose to save it as a binary. As you can see, I've already done it once before. So uh, that will bring up the menu for the binary once I've uh, told it I don't want, I'm happy to overwrite. And so include attributes in output as before, first pixels, uh, block level output, 8 by 8 So I just choose OK. And um, that's it. I've now saved that file and it's ready to be imported into AGD. So uh, let's move over now to AGD and have a look at that. Right, so here we are in AGD and obviously in that previous video I showed you how to load in an entire block set but obviously what we want to do here is actually load in to a game where we already have some blocks and we want to add to them. So this is the Attic Attack game. I'm just showing you the blocks here. As you can see we've got a range of uh, different colored blocks, most of which make up the doors as uh, if you've watched the Attic Attack videos, you'll certainly be aware of that. So the total number of blocks is 41. So when it comes to importing data, that's the first number we need to make a mental note of or even make a physical note of, 41 blocks. Okay, so now we need to create another 21 blocks, which is um, the number of blocks, obviously, that the, uh, the graphic that I uh, saved off takes up. So we'll add that, 41 plus uh, 21 is 62, so from 0 to 61 makes 62 blocks. Now, because of the way that the data is stored, what we need to do first of all is import the pixel data only, and then we'll import the attribute data later. So as you may remember, if we look at this point of the address here, just after where we store the sprites is another number here at 7D40 and 41. It's 9FA4. This may be different for you. It changes from game to game. So we read that number off. We flip it and we go into the hexadecimal converter. As you can see, I've already typed it in here. And there is the address. So that is our address for the start of the blocks that we are going to load in. Now obviously we're not going to be loading this data in at the start and that means we need to make some calculation to calculate where to load it in. So we have originally 41 blocks. Each one takes up 8 bytes. That means 328 bytes. 
So by adding the original number here to this number, 328, that's going to tell us where our new blocks start, but it's only the pixel data. So let's take a look at that now. Then let's load it in 41196. So when it comes to loading the pixel data, that is the address that we need. So the next thing to do then is go over to the file menu and um, look at loading in the pixel data and um, testing it out. So let's go to the file menu now here and we will choose to load binary data and of course here we've got our Sabre flower so we'll load that in. Now the thing to remember as we already said is that uh, we need to use the new calculated address which is 41196. However the other thing we also need to think of is that this number here 189 that also includes the attribute data so we're going to have to make another calculation so that we only load the pixels in at this point. If we don't do that we'll end up loading uh, at the attribute data over other areas and so that will cause a problem. So what we need to do is take 189 and uh, divide it by 9 which is uh, the number of bytes per block. That gives us 21. That confirms that we do indeed have 21 blocks here. So it's 21 blocks of data multiplied by 8. So you can just multiply the number of blocks by 8 if you want to get the uh, correct number for the um, for the amount of bytes for the pixels. So there we go. We'll put the number into here and we'll load it in. Let's now take a look and see if it's worked. And here we can see clearly that the data itself has uh, loaded in quite happily with no problems. And I think what I'll do then, obviously there's no color. There you can see the color ones. So I think what I'll do is I'll go into here and just try and draw it out onto the screen just to make sure that, um, I can check that the pixel data has uh, has loaded in successfully. So I'll start from from the last uh, block and work backwards. It's just a little easier for me to do that it's from where I was. So I'll work backwards now and as you can see, yep, uh, as I go step by step, there's no question here that the uh, the data that I wanted has loaded into the correct position and we can see our little uh, flower taking shape very nicely there. So um, the next thing that we need to think about then is uh, how we get the color. So let's now move on to looking at that. So the simplest option when it comes to adding color obviously if you don't have a lot of blocks is to just go in like this and basically change it manually. There are only after all here 21 blocks so it wouldn't take me that long to play about and get it right. Um, and as you can see here I'm just working through changing a few colors and um, obviously that's that's one option. Let's take a look at how it looks on screen. Here you can see yep yeah, and uh, yeah so I could work through that and do that. When you're working with a small um, image like this it's probably actually a little bit quicker but if you do actually want to load in all the attributes uh, directly then uh, I'll show you how to do that now. What I'm going to do here is basically split the uh, the binary data and in order to do that uh, I have to load it into a space in memory that I know isn't going to be affected by uh, AGD and to be honest the easiest place to do that is actually the screen itself which starts at 16384 so I'll now load in the uh, the block and attribute data into the screen memory and uh, as soon as I've done that you'll see that the screen itself looks a little bit corrupted nothing to worry about it's just storing the data there for me so that I can now save off the attributes to save off the attributes what I need to do of course is to calculate where they begin so what we know from uh, from our previous calculation is that because we have uh, 21 blocks in total and uh, we have uh, 8 bytes per block it means that the attribute data starts 168 bytes from the beginning so if we add uh, 168 <clears throat> to uh, 16384 we get 16552 so that's where our attribute data is stored screen memory plus number of blocks times 8. 
So I now go to um, the file save save binary data and I'm now going to save off a new file which I'm going to call saberflower ats. So this is just the attributes and um, from our calculation 16552 so I will uh, just uh, type that into here and we already know that uh, attributes are only one byte and so basically it's going to be uh, 21 bytes isn't it so we don't really need to do a calculation there let's just uh, go into here and put it in so 21 bytes saved off and um, all I've done there as I now press a button anything like any any button will do and it will clear the screen and uh, as you can see everything's back to normal it's literally just a holding place a place that I knew wouldn't be corrupted by anything and uh, easily cleared as well obviously by pressing clear the screen okay so we've uh, created our binary file which is only 21 bytes long but obviously if you've got a bigger image you're importing it might be more than that so all we need to do now is import it so we're going to go back to the memory browser here and we're going to look at the next address of uh, interest so 7d3d that stores the sprites the next one along stores the pixel data for the blocks and this little bit here uh, where it says 94A1 well we're going to flip that to A194 and that is going to give us the address of our attribute data so uh, we'll uh, do the calculation here and um, get the number in decimal so that we can load the file in so we'll start with this number here uh, 42129 now the thing that you must remember here of course is that is the start of the uh, attribute data for the for, for the whole set and obviously what we want to do is load our data in at the at the point where we've made the new blocks so in other words it's uh, 41 blocks ahead so we'll start with the number that we've uh, that we've already calculated and uh, we now just need to add 41 to give us the address where the attributes for our new blocks should begin so this number here 42170 we'll copy this and this is now where we need to load in our data so I'll go to the file here it is that I created and um, load it in at that address and uh, if everything goes according to plan then we should find if we now look at the blocks that uh, indeed there you can see that they all have uh, colors which uh, certainly would appear to match the ones in the original game so let's now look at it on the actual uh, editor screen and uh, we'll see how it how it's come out and uh, there you go as you can see that's an exact replica of the one that we had in uh, Saberwolf so we've successfully managed to take a screenshot from Saberwolf copy a small block and uh, import it into AGD obviously I'm not gonna have this big flower here on my uh, attic attack game it's just purely for demonstration purposes um, so that's it really I hope that's been useful to you I think it's quite a uh, handy little uh, tool and um, doesn't take too long once you get used to it so thanks a lot for watching this video I hope it's been uh, enjoyable and uh, I'll be back again soon with another one so uh, I'll speak to you then. Take good care, keep enjoying AGD and indeed the Spectrum, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.